If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Holly Baird. Today we're planting sweet peas or spring peas, whatever you want to call them. And we are planting them so that they grow up this trellis that we just built. Um, we decided to do this wave pattern to maximize space. Uh, peas take 55 to 70 days to grow. And so what we're gonna do in about 30 days or so, we're gonna go ahead and plant cucumbers behind them so when the peas are exhausted, then the cucumbers will begin to grow and make dual purpose of this area or bring a, bring a crop in behind the spring crop. So peas, you plant them about one inch apart and you just can plant it a row along your, your trellis area. So that's what we're gonna do here. Now you can pre-soak your peas. I'm just making a little um, I don't know, divot here. You wanna plant them about a half an inch or so about an inch apart and we didn't pre-soak ours we just plant them as is you don't have to get real technical you can grow whatever variety you want we choose to grow sweet peas you can grow shelling peas you can grow a uh, combination variety whatever you have but they're just pretty easy to pop right in the soil here And then you can take your hand or your trowel, whatever you choose to use, and just cover them up. Now, you can water them in. That's going to help their germination. But if you look at your forecast and you see that there's some rain coming, then you don't have to worry about watering them in. So there you have it, planting your peas. We have this trellis that we built. You want to make sure you do have some sort of apparatus so that the peas can grow up it and you'll get maximum harvest and maximum production. So Holly planted the peas and then what we can't did is we came in and covered it with leaf mulch. Now this is just enough because we're going to get a lot of rain here in the next few days. This will be enough to one hold in the moisture that we get and two deflect the water where it's not blasting the seed the soil away from the seed even though we planted it about a half inch inch deep um, and then it would be light enough to lift the, the allow the seedling to lift through now if you don't have leaves at this point straw shredded paper chemical free seed free dry grass clippings will all work in this at uh, in this application anything to get the soil covered now we've got a, bay, uh, a dead area here we've got a dead area here and then one over there so we're not going to let those areas go vacant. We're going to utilize these. So first we're going to start with this area here where I can get a handful of these golden beets in the bed. Now I did leave a trench here. The trench will go right, the trench is right here and that will be my guideline uh, to keep away from that. So when we plant the cucumbers, that's where they will go. And as the peas are already getting to mature state, the cucumbers can grow right in behind like we talked about, maximizing the space uh, as much as possible. So with beets, they'll take about 55 days to reach maturity. We will have to thin these beets. We have planted beets before, but we want to plant more because you never can have enough beets. Mm -hmm. So I've made kind of a triangle here and then I've made a row down the center. So all I'm going to do is space them about two and a half, three inches apart. And then once they germinate, then we will thin them out. And I will cover these with the leaf mulch as well. And I can always get rid of beets if I have too many. I can't just replant some just because and, and have them catch up. Uh, it doesn't work that well. And I'll put one there. Okay. So that will just cover that up. Got that done. I'll get my leaf mulch here. And all I'm doing is I'm just shaking it. I'm not pressing it down. There's some wet leaves in here that's holding it down. And this was just uh, vacuumed up with the leaf uh, blower. 
All right, that's done. Now let's talk about what we can plant in this area here. I have a seed tray of seedlings in which we've started. I've got red romaine lettuce, I've got kale, I've got kohlrabi. Kohlrabi can be started from seed and transplanted out. You can get it at your local garden center that way. We've done that a number of times over the years, but we were able to start these from very old seeds. These seeds were about five to six years old, and it took about three plantings and about 50 or 60 seeds to get the uh, 20 plants here that we have, 20, 25 plants that we have because the seeds were so old. Now, the way you plant kohlrabi, if you've never seen a kohlrabi, it's a very unique plant where the bulb comes up and stands on the stalk, and then you have a bunch of uh, leaves that come out, alien-like plant if you really want to uh, define it that way. So we will, remember, we've got to keep off the space here for our cucumbers, so that'll be there. So I can get one, two, let's go here, one there, two here, I can get three. Again, we want to maximize our space, but not crowd them so much to where they compete and they uh, inhibit their maximum potential of growth. So we'll just pop one of these out. Uh, try to get a, a larger one. These are put to get, uh, grown in the root maker grow trays. You can see how all the roots are not wrapped around, but there's a lot of white roots, a lot of vigorous roots. White roots are a healthy thing to see. If they are discolored, uh, then you've got problems and we need to figure out what uh, the issue there is. Okay, got one there. Let's get, an, let's get this large one right here. And the best way to get seedlings out of a tray is let them dry slightly and then they kind of pop out more easily. Now I'm spacing these about six inches apart. They're going to get, you know, good size with their leaf structure. And I'll, this one's a large one here. We will pull out very nice roots and put it right there. Okay, I'll mulch that right now since I've got the mulch here. And again, mulch can be any natural material. Shredded paper, as I spoke about, is a good mulch. may not be the most eye appealing, but it does work very well. Okay, so that's done. We got one more space over there to plant. We're gonna plant the red romaine to finish filling in that spot. And if we run out of red romaine, we can fill in with more kohlrabi or beets. All right, so we've got this area here. Let's mark the, let me mark my area to where I want to keep away from the current planting. So that knocks it down a little bit. Okay, I've got red romaine. Now there's red romaine and there's green romaine. And we find that the red romaine actually prolongs life a little lo uh, longer into the season, meaning it doesn't go to seed as quick or it doesn't bolt. The green romaine seems to go a lot quicker. The red romaine seems like we get about two more weeks out of it before it goes to bolt and gets bitter. And the bitterness is really not in the leaves itself. It's in the central stem of the leaves. So if you remove that, then you're okay. You can go ahead and eat lettuce all summer long. Now these didn't pull out of the tray as well because they're much smaller, but we will go ahead and plant them and accordingly. The benefit, the sun comes over, comes from that direction and comes over this way. So having this lettuce here, and I don't know quite what we're going to decide to put in this bed here, but it's going to add a little shade to these red romaines, keep the soil a little cooler, and then they will actually last longer. So let me dig another one of these out and put my finger down in there and pull it out. These can be planted. I'm going to plant these somewhat close because you're wanting to maximize the space. And when I talk about that, think about the full maturity of the plant at its capacity. And you want that to be almost touching uh, one another, kind of like trees in the forest. They, the canopy kind of overlaps a little bit, kind of what we're looking for here, but we won't, don't want it so tight where they feel, uh, feel pressured uh, against each other. So I used up all of the red romaine that I had in the tray. Now I've got some Little Jim Butter Crunch lettuce, and we're going to plant that the same. Now this is actually, it's a little head of lettuce, kind of one serving size. So these get a little, these are more tower-like, the romaine lettuce. The Butter Crunch is a little more widespread in uh, production. So I'm going to space these back a little bit more than what I did the red romaine. 
just to give them a little more because it it'll be about the, that size uh bowl bowl size when they're fully mature uh so it works out really well so i've got a couple of those i've got four of those that we can throw in there clean the tray out there and then i'll see what i have left when i get those planted So what was left in the tray was the three butter crunch and the rodent romaine. I do have a little space here. So when you're doing something like this, it's not necessarily buy the book. This is what it says you have to plant this many. You need to be creative and maximize the space and, and, and plant multiple things in one area. Not so much a companion planting, but like a, like a polyculture, multiple, two or more plants benefiting the uh, adjacent plants. And over here, we don't have to do anything because we can just run plants right up next to uh, this area since that bed's all empty. So I got enough room for one row of beets right here. They're going to press. It's going to be kind of tight, but I think I, I'm better off planting something here than just leaving it empty. And that's how easy it is to plant peas, romaine lettuce, beets, and butter, uh, little butter gym head lettuce all in one row and kohlrabi. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening. As always, please rate, subscribe, and comment. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.